Hello friends, welcome to Environmental Science, Unit 1, Multidisciplinary Nature of Environmental Science. So in this video, we are going to see the, de the definition, scope, importance and need for public awareness. So the first one is definition. Here, Environmental Science is a multidisciplinary one. It is integrated with various subjects like Biology, Geology, Chemistry, Physics, Engineering, Sociology, Health, Anthropology, Economics, Statistics, Computers and Computer Science and Philosophy. So the various activities related to these subjects, that is the Biology, Geology, Chemistry and all the other subjects will directly or indirectly affect the environment. So now you think how all these subjects affect the environment. Yes, for example, we take economics. How economics can affect the environment? So to improve the economic activity of our society or of our state or nation, various buildings are constructed in the forest area and roads are laid in the forest area by destructing the natural habitat of plants and animals. Often we hear the news that animals, especially elephants are crossing the highways and railway tracks. So in these cases, Elephants are often met with the accident and they die. But actually the case is, or the truth is, only human beings, so only the human beings are crossing the ways of animals and elephants and disturbing them. Actually, the animals are not uh, disturbing the human beings. So this kind of economic activities, that is construction of buildings and roads, directly affects the environment. So thus, the environmental studies can be defined as a study that deals with every issue that is every issue that affects an organism the second one is the scope of environmental science the environmental science consists of four segments they are the atmosphere hydrosphere lithosphere and biosphere moreover the environment is constituted by the interacting systems of physical biological and cultural elements which are interrelated in various ways the life of human being is dependent on the environment. So hence, there will be no human life without the environment because the human life is mainly dependent on the environment. So wherever we live, for example, take for example, uh, whether it is a village, town or city, we get our food supply from the surrounding villages only. So all our uh, food needs of the people who are living in the town get their uh, food supply from the surrounding villages. So these villages in turn are dependent on the forests, grasslands, rivers, seashores around them for the requirement of water, fuel wood, fodder and fish. So thus our daily lives are in some way or other linked with our surroundings. Everything around us forms the environment. So this is the notable thing. So hence everything around us forms our environment. Thus, the scope of environmental science is wider than what we think. Next one is importance of EVs. We live in a world in which the natural resources are limited. Water, soil, mineral, oil and the products we get from the forest that is the grasslands, oceans and from agricultural livestock are all part of our life support system. Or that means all products or all things, materials we get from the nature are only for our life support systems. This we have to understand. Hence, without them or without all these products we get from the nature, life itself would be impossible in the earth. But still, the natural resources are often misused by people. Now let us see how the natural resources are misused. So we are wasting or polluting large amount of nature's clean water in one way. Then we create more and more materials like plastics and that we discard after a single use. Uh, for example, carry bags and such other plastic bags are used by the people just for one time and after that they are just uh, simply throw away in the garbage. Then we waste large amounts of food which are discarded as garbage while many people are starving without food. Then a manufacturing process 
waste create solid waste byproducts that are discarded in the garbage then chemicals chemicals flow out as liquid waste and pollute the water and gases and gases pollute the air the increasing amount of waste cannot be managed by natural process by means of natural mechanism these waste products accumulate in our environment leading to a variety of diseases and other adverse environmental impacts now seriously affecting all our lives for example air pollution leads to respiratory diseases and water pollution leads to gastrointestinal diseases and many other pollutants are known to cause cancer so in some way or other these waste products which are let into the environment are always danger to the human being so we cannot expect the government to manage the safeguarding of the environment how government can concentrate all these disturbances made to the environment by the people government can create some rules and regulations and laws to protect the environment but it is the duty of the people to observe and to follow it so hence we cannot expect the government to manage the safeguarding of the environment and also we cannot expect other people to prevent the environmental damage so what to do so in this case here every one of us so we have to do it ourselves so it is the responsibility of each and every one of us to safeguard the environment to save the environment for the future generation so next one is the productive value of nature so nature has uh, various uh, values uh, let us see one by one the first one is the productive value of nature here the nature produces everything that we need so we are uh, getting all the thing we require from the nature only uh, for example various chemicals various chemicals obtained from the plants and animal species are the raw materials that are used for developing new medicines and industrial products so these species that means uh, the plants and uh, animals are acting like a storehouse they are actually the storehouse from which we can develop thousands of new products in the future so if we destroy or degrade their habitat these species will become extinct and then we cannot uh, produce anything in the future due to the extinction of these species so once they are lost man cannot bring them back we have to so hence we have to save the environment for the future generation there is a close link between agriculture and forest if we want the crops are to be successful the flowers of fruit trees and vegetables must be pollinated by insects bats and birds all agricultural products like flowers and fruits will be formed only after pollination so when there is no pollination there is no agriculture so hence pollination is very much important for the formation of agricultural products here forests are the habitats of these insects bats and birds hence we have to save the forest in order to save the agriculture the next one is the aesthetic or recreational value of nature here the national parks wildlife sanctuaries botanical gardens and zoo provide aesthetic and recreational value by means of tourism so uh, our people are visiting all these places only for the recreational purpose so these recreational facilities they are not only provide a pleasurable pleasurable experience to the people um, but also creates a deep respect and love for nature so when the students and the research scholars uh, visit all these um, uh, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries botanical gardens and zoos they get a respect and uh, which make them um, a love and a care for the nature and environment so when we see the magnificence of a mountain and the power of the sea and the beauty of forest and a vast expanse of the desert which provides us an aesthetic and recreational value so all these places people usually uh, make a tour uh, to places where uh, mountains and the sea and the natural forest are 
present. So this is the example for the recreation value. And uh, if we see in an urban setting, uh, there are many green spaces here and there and the gardens and the parks are set up in the cities or town places which are in order to boost the psychological and the physical health of the city people. So uh, these uh, things also provides aesthetic and visual appeal and also a peace of mind to all these city dwelling people. The next one is the absence value of nature. We enjoy the benefits of nature. Each and every activity that we do in our daily lives has an adverse impact on nature's integrity. So nature provides us with various options on how to utilize, that is how uh, people are utilizing its goods and services. So this is the option value of uh, nature. Uh, here we have to decide whether to use up the goods and services of nature greedily and destroy its integrity and long term values or to use the resources in a sustainable way and reduce our impacts on the environment. So these are the two options which are uh, provided by nature to us uh, whether to use the uh, natural resources greedily or to use the natural resources sustainably to save the nature for the future generation and this is the nature uh, value of option value of nature. At present, a great number of environmental issues have grown in size and complexity day by day uh, by uh, threatening the survival of mankind on the earth. So environmental studies have become significant for the following reasons. Environmental issues being of international importance, global warming, ozone depletion, acid rain, marine pollution and biodiversity are not merely national issues but are global issues because the environmental issues of one country does not affect that particular country alone and it also affects the countries worldwide and hence it must be tackled with international efforts and cooperation of all countries in order to uh, put an end to the environmental issues. The next one is problems cropped in the wake of development. So developmental activities due to the urbanization, industrial growth, transportation systems, agriculture and housing has also created many environmental problems. Increase in population, there is a heavy pressure on the natural resources including land due to the increase in population. Agriculture experts now have recognized that the soil's health problems like deficiency of micronutrients and deficiency of organic matter and the deficiency of soil salinity and damage of soil structure are all due to the increase in population. A need for an alternative solution. It is essential, especially for developing countries, to find an alternative path and an alternative goal for the development. Then need to save humanity from extinction and need for wise planning of development. So these are the importance of areas. The next one is need for public awareness. So creating awareness among the public is a must at this situation. A public awareness can be created with the help of mass media such as newspapers, radio, television and activities of NGOs, uh, institutions, and noted people who are caring for the environment. Uh, here, there are uh, there have been several government and non-governmental organizations that have led to the environmental protection in our country by means of their uh, various programs and activities. Here is the list of institutions who are working for the environment. They are the Botanical Survey of India, Zoological Survey of India, Bombay Natural History Society in Mumbai, CPR Environmental Education Center in Chennai, Center for Environment Education Ahmedabad, Worldwide Fund for Nature New Delhi, Center for Science and Environment New Delhi, Bharti Vidyapith Institute of Environment in Pune, Education and Research Pune, Salim Ali Center for Ornithology and Natural History in Coimbatore, and Wildlife Institute of India at Dehradun. People in the environment. 
so uh, some people are working for the uh, protection of the environment as here uh, we are going to see about them so there have been a number of individuals who have been instrumental in shaping the environmental history in our country some of the well known names include uh, environmentalist scientist administrators legal experts educationist and uh, a journalist uh, some of them are the salim ali who is an ornithologist uh, ms swaminathan an agricultural scientist madha patkar activist of narmada river dam and sundarlal bhaguna the activist of chipko movement so far in this video we have discussed about the definition scope importance of evs and need for public awareness under the caption the multidisciplinary nature of environmental science thank you